Good morning. I am Anne Chavone. As Associate Dean for Academic Affairs at the School of Law, I declare the 2023 Thomas R. Klein School of Law of Duquesne University commencement ceremony open and direct the academic procession to begin. Will the audience please rise? Thank you. 
morning. I'm April Barton, Dean of the Thomas R. Klein School of Law of Duquesne University. It is my honor to open the commencement exercises for the class of 2023. To open this morning's program, I ask that you remain standing for the national anthem sung by Deborah Zugates. On behalf of the faculty, I welcome and salute the class of 2023. I am pleased to announce that 137 graduates will receive the degree of Juris Doctor this morning. I welcome the friends and families of the graduates because without your support, the class of 2023 would not be here today. Before proceeding, I would like to welcome members of our university administration joining us on stage. First, Duquesne University President Ken Gormley, who has served as a faculty member of the law school for 29 years. Seven of those years, he served as our dean before becoming university president. President Gormley sets the tone for our entire university with a daily lived commitment to our spirits and mission, serving God by serving our students who then go on to serve others. Welcome also to Pamela Connolly, our senior vice president for legal affairs and general counsel. James Miller, Senior Vice President of University Advancement, and Gabriel Welsh, Vice President of Marketing and Communications. I value each of you more than you know, and I really appreciate the support that you give to our law school. In the first few rows in front of me are our exceptional faculty who have challenged and mentored and taught and inspired our graduates to become the professionals you see in front of us today. To begin ceremonies, I ask Father Bill Christie, University Chaplain and Director of Spirit and Campus Ministry at Duquesne University to offer the invocation. Let us pray. Holy Spirit of God, you are the Spirit who gives life, and we invoke your holy name and ask you to draw near to us as we celebrate this commencement ceremony. When these students matriculated into the Thomas R. Klein School of Law at Duquesne University, we place them under your protective care, for you are the patron of our university. We ask you to renew the breath of life within them so that they may grow in age, grace, and wisdom during their time here. We ask this of you, and we praise you, for you graciously answered our prayer. But Holy Spirit of God, you did more than we could have ever hoped for or dreamed of. You gave us blessings beyond anything we could have thought to ask for. You hovered over us as an eagle hovers over her young to entice us 
to stretch out our wings and take flight. For these students entered law school with mask mandates and social distancing. They entered on Zoom classes and with virtual instruction. And still they flourished, still they learned, still they grew. Holy Spirit, it is your providence and by your grace that we are brought here this day to celebrate, a celebration that many of us dared not imagine possible. So, Holy Spirit, Lord of life and of love, come now and bless this ceremony, for we acknowledge all you have done for us and trust all you will do in the lives of our graduates. We are dedicated to you, and we invoke you. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We ask this of you, in union with the Father and the Son, God forever and ever. Amen. Please, please be seated. At this time, I am very pleased to introduce Olamide Oweya, a member of the class of 2023, who will present two special awards and speak on behalf of the graduates. Before I begin my remarks, I have the honor of announcing two teaching awards. First are the adjunct awards. Criteria used is select in selecting the recipients include enthusiasm for teaching and learning, interest in the students, sensitivity to the learning environment, and innovation of instruction. This year's recipients are Professor Adam Tregone, for fall semester, and Professor David Jameson of spring semester. Please stand and be recognized. The second award is the Excellence in Teaching Award, which recognizes a professor who has made outstanding contributions in teaching. The recipient must also demonstrate the ability to engage students actively in the learning process through teaching that is intellectually rigorous and innovative. I am pleased to announce that this year's recipient is Professor Ashley London. Good afternoon, graduates, faculty and staff, distinguished guests, family, friends, and well-wishers. On behalf of the class of 2023, I welcome you all, and we thank you for your love and support over this three or four year roller coaster ride. We couldn't have made it without your encouragement and prayers. I wanna start by doing a reflective exercise inspired by Dean Chavon and what she did with my legal research and writing class at the end of my first year. We were instructed to close our eyes as she described how we navigated the new order as students and professors in the midst of a global pandemic. Now, I will ask all the graduates to close your eyes as I take you on a journey through your law school career at Duquesne Klein Law. I also welcome our guests to close your eyes as well to have a small taste of what your graduate experience to get them to this point. 
take a deep breath and give yourself permission to relax and reflect. Now think back to the day you received your acceptance to Duquesne Law. The excitement, the nerves, wondering who to share this amazing news with first. Whether it's been a lifelong dream or a sudden career change, regardless, you did it. You made it, and so your law school journey began. But then that journey took an interesting turn as we soon entered a global pandemic. Suddenly, what we imagined our law school experience would be as day students and the abrupt change for the evening students as they were wrapping up their first year transitioned into a journey into the unknown. But in the face of uncertainty, we rose to the challenge and continued to move forward. We didn't know if class would be in person or fully online, but with the school being as flexible as possible, they gave us the best of both worlds, a hybrid option. And so the semester began. Whether you were on Zoom or in person, you couldn't escape the clawing hands of cold call. And I'm sure we all remember our first cold call. Imagine answering questions with a mask on and talking and sounding like you're fighting for your life. It's a survival skill, y'all. Add it to your resume. But little by little, we became acclimated to the new normal. And then boom, thrown to the wolves to write our first lengthy 45 plus page appellate brief only five months into law school. Not only did they want us to write it, but they wanted us to argue it while three judges hammered us with questions as we tried to please the court. The day students had oral arguments on Zoom while the evening students never got the chance because of COVID. But once again, we rose to the challenge and continued to move forward. Now everyone open your eyes and look around you. That's what 2L felt like. All of us finally in one space, meeting some of our lifelong friends for the first time in person and the mask mandate was finally lifted. I'm sure we all look different than we thought, but we're a good looking class. But all jokes aside, we read a lot about the law, but we also watched as history was made from our unique perspective as law students. From the presidential election that kept us up all night, that ushered in the first African-American and Asian-American female vice president of the United States, and the first African-American female Supreme Court justice, and the overturning of landmark cases in our US history. Moments like these allowed us to navigate through some tough and honest conversations. But we rose to the challenge and we grew to understand and respect not only the ever-changing law, but each other. We also witnessed the historic donation of $50 million to the law school from Mr. Tom Klein and watched as the law school unveiled its new name. We are now the first graduating class of the Thomas R. Klein School of Law of Duquesne University. The class of 2023 shares such a unique bond through these experiences, and no one can truly understand unless they have walked in our shoes. I marvel at the strength of my classmates as I watched you beast through classes and even volunteer after we all knew you just lost a loved one. Or as some of us jumped right back into the swing of things after getting married or having a baby. But this is also what sets us apart from the pack. As a class, we have leaned on each other through much gain and loss and I encourage us all to never forget the community we have built as we transition into the lawyers of tomorrow. We will still need each other long after we leave this campus. Let us continue to foster and build this lifelong bond. We are superhumans, as I remember numerous seasoned attorneys telling me during 1L networking events. Although we may not have fully grasped what they meant because we just started and graduation seems so distant, but now it is our reality. It is tangible and it is in our hands. But to whom much is given, much is expected. 
We must take all the lessons we have learned through life and law school and pour them into our various professional careers. We must remain flexible, determined, and resilient no matter what comes our way as we navigate this new chapter as lawyers. But most importantly, we are worthy and deserving to occupy the space that we find ourselves in. And with that even being said, we are worthy and deserving to be the lawyers that we are today. So as we move into our various legal careers, it is important to remember to also change the spaces we occupy and pay it forward to those coming after us. For it took us connecting with those before us to point us in the right direction. As I close, a Nigerian Yoruba proverb says, a king's palace that burned down actually became more beautiful, meaning success and beauty are usually achieved after many obstacles. Although this is what my personal statement was about, I believe this proverb rings true to us all as we reflect on our journey. We embody this because we persevered through all the adversities we faced and we came out victorious. This is our rainbow. This is our ray of sunlight. I am so proud of us all. Now go forth and do great things. And in the words of Elle Woods, what? Like it's hard? Congratulations, class of 2023. We did it. Thank you, Alamide, for your beautiful and inspiring remarks. Well done. It is my great honor to address all of you today, particularly the class of 2023. I remember looking out over your class and smiling ear to ear and welcoming you during orientation. And now here we are at commencement. For our evening students, you began four years ago in 2019. That was the same year I began as dean of this school. We had no idea what the next few years would hold. For our day students, it was 2020, and you jumped right in during the midst of the chaos. Our hybrid and socially distance, or distance orientation was just the beginning of our extraordinary journey together. What I have seen is that you have all rose to the challenge of completing law school. This is a lofty goal during normal times, an absolute feat of strength during a pandemic. And you succeeded, even with all of the instability surrounding you. You met every challenge with an upbeat attitude and a can-do mindset. You treated your colleagues with grace and dignity every step of the way. You looked out for each other. You uplifted one another so that we could carry on. We worked together and we figured out how to make it through what seemed like never-ending challenges, but they were ones that only proved to strengthen our community and our bond. We learned how to adjust our sails to changing winds, and we became stronger and more determined. And as I was thinking back to our orientation together, I recalled the oath that you took that spoke to four core values. Value number one, integrity. Integrity is the cornerstone of our profession. Duquesne Klein lawyers are ethical. We are honest and we do the right thing, always, even when it is harder or inconvenient. And Duquesne Klein lawyers don't just aim to meet the minimum standards of professional conduct. We set the high standard and we raise others to meet those high standards as well. Value number two, diligence. Every client deserves our best. Lives and liberty are in our hands, and we must never forget that. Duquesne Klein lawyers know that every case and every matter deserve our complete attention and care, and we don't take shortcuts ever. Value number three, respect for others. Duquesne Klein lawyers treat others with respect, and that is everyone, even those from whom we may be different or those with whom we may disagree. We engage in respectful discourse. We treat everyone with collegiality and we take time to connect with their innate humanity. 
Duquesne Klein lawyers know that all of us have a responsibility to create an equitable and inclusive environment for all, and not only while we are here at Duquesne, but as we go out into the world and serve society. Finally, value number four, justice. Justice is the very purpose of our legal system. Justice is fairness, it is impartiality, it is our system of laws and civil society. Justice is fundamental to our democracy. Duquesne Klein lawyers use their skills to actively contribute to our system of justice for a greater good. We are inspired by our namesake, Thomas R. Klein, to uphold each of these values, to serve our profession with integrity and character, and to serve clients with compassion and dignity. By becoming a Duquesne Klein lawyer and leading with these four values, we can impact the future of our profession and our society in profound ways. You have each been uniquely prepared to be transformational leaders. You have shown over these past four years your desire and your drive to uplift others and to make a difference in the world around you. Your passion for knowledge and truth are apparent. You embody the spirits and mission of Duquesne, and I know that you will carry that innate empathy and goodness with you throughout your lives and your careers. Thank you. Thank you for the inspiring example you have set over these past several years. It has been an absolute joy to get to know each of you and to watch you shine. And I truly mean it all that when I say that all of you are the reason why I have the best job in the world. You are the class of 2023 and will always have a very special place in my heart. Thank you for all that you have given to each other and to all of us. You are why all of us as staff and faculty and administration do what we do every single day. You are the next generation of ambassadors and protectors of the law, the future of our profession. And with you, I know that our future is in the very best of hands. Thank you, class of 2023. I now have the pleasure of announcing several important awards that are bestowed at commencement. And we are extremely pleased to have added several faculty awards due to Mr. Klein's profound generosity to our school. First, the Thomas R. Klein Excellence in Teaching Award is awarded to the full-time faculty member who best demonstrates overall excellence and adherence to our mission in teaching as evidenced by student and peer evaluations. The inaugural award in this area goes to Professor Jane Moriarty for her exceptional teaching <laughs> of evidence. Please stand. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Moriarty. Our next award is the Thomas R. Klein Innovation in Teaching Award, awarded to the full-time faculty member who best demonstrates innovative and creative teaching methods that serve the pedagogical needs of our students and advances the legal pedagogy generally. The inaugural award in this area goes to Professor Wes Oliver. <laughs> Professor Oliver has a Coding for Lawyers class, which is one of the only three uh, classes in the country, and the course has gained national attention. Uh, and in fact, students from the course have gone on to successfully represent Duquesne Klein in competitions uh, throughout the nation. Next, the Thomas R. Klein Meritorious Service Award, awarded to the full-time faculty member whose contributions to the law school and its mission exceeded expectations and had a significant impact on the university and our community partners. The inaugural award in this area goes to professors Kate Norton and Grace Orsati for their outstanding work. <laughs> for their outstanding work developing the Elder Justice Consortium, and this is a partnership amongst all Pennsylvania law schools, serving the needs of Pennsylvania's aging popula population and providing opportunities for law students to learn and serve their communities. So thank you, Professor Norton and Professor Orsati. 
Next, the Murray Scholarship Faculty Award. In 2011, Chancellor John Murray honored the school's 100th anniversary by making a substantial gift. And this gift was established uh, and established the endowed fund for this faculty scholarship. This fund has allowed us to invite nationally acclaimed legal scholars to the law school and enables us to recognize our own outstanding faculty each year. Today, I'd like to announce that the Murray Award for Faculty Scholarship is being bestowed upon Professor Richard Hepner for his scholarship in appellate procedure and judicial interpretation. <laughs> Next, it is my honor to present the top uh, three uh, law school's top three student awards to our most deserving graduates. The first award is the John J. Shulo Peer Excellency Award, named in honor of the late John J. Shulo, who served from 1982 to 1993 as the eighth dean of our law school. The award is given to the graduating student who, in the judgment of the graduating class, is worthy of the admiration and respect of their peers. This year's recipient is Mackenzie Davis. Mackenzie Davis, please stand to be recognized. <laughs> the next award is the Dr. John and Liz Murray Award for Excellence in Student Scholarship which is named in honor of the university's 11th president, Dr. John Murray, and his wife. This award is presented to the graduating student who authored the most outstanding published law review article in any, of anybody in the graduating class. And I'm very pleased to announce that this year's recipient of the Dr. John and Liz Murray Award for Excellence in Student Scholarship is Anna Maria Sichenitsa. Anna Maria Sichenitsa, please stand and be recognized. The final award I have to present today on behalf of the entire faculty is the President Ken and Laura Gormley Distinguished Student Award. This special award is made to the graduating students, one from the day division, one from the evening division, who in the judgment of the faculty have displayed general scholastic excellence and who have also performed meritorious service to the School of Law. The award is named by the University Board of Directors in recognition of President Ken Gormley, long-serving faculty member, constitutional law scholar, dean of the School of Law, and president of our university and his wife, Laura. I am absolutely delighted to announce that this year's recipients are Morgan Camerlo and Donald Sheldon. Morgan and Donnie, please stand. It is now my pleasure to introduce Ken Gormley, the 13th president of Duquesne University, to offer his remarks and to introduce today's commencement speaker, President Gormley. Thank you, Dean Barton, and good morning. My name is Ken Gormley, and I have the privilege of serving as the 13th president of Duquesne University. Welcome to all of the members of the incredible class of 2023 of the Thomas R. Klein School of Law and to your families and friends. And by the way, we have such a nice group here. Can we have ask all of the parents, grandparents, significant others, and family members to please stand? Okay, graduates, let's hear it for these folks who helped make this day special day possible. Okay, pretty good round of applause for all of you out there. It's a special honor to join all of you for this commencement ceremony. It's the 108th commencement in the history of the law school. And as Alameda said, uh, the very first of the Duquesne Klein School of Law. The first commencement was actually a small event in the spring of 1915 in a building in downtown Pittsburgh across from the county courthouse. It's actually a parking garage today. Uh, today, I'm so happy to be here with you to continue that proud tradition in this beautiful field house. As Dean Barton said, I've had the honor of serving in as, as an esteemed member of this faculty for 29 years now, seven of them as dean before taking on this current role. And I've even taught a few of these students in my undergrad presidents in the Constitution class, so I know them well. 
Uh, today, as president of this historic institution, I want to honor your achievements, congratulate each of you on attaining this singular personal and professional accomplishment. As we celebrate this important milestone, I want to remind you that you are receiving two important things of great value today. The first, obviously, is your degree from the Thomas R. Klein School of Law, allowing you to serve others and, as Dean Barton said, make meaningful contributions for the rest of your lives. You're forever connected now to this place and these esteemed law school faculty members who have taught you well including the professor's honor today with these special awards. And I forgot that. I think we better have the faculty stand up to be recognized. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the best law school faculty in the United States. Can we please hear it for the Duquesne Klein School of Law faculty? So in addition to graduates to attaining your degrees today, as you walk across this stage, you're, there's something else worth celebrating, and that is that you've gained lifelong friends and colleagues during your time at Duquesne, and they will be key to even bigger things as you embark on your careers. And I assure you there will be lots of exciting opportunities ahead. These fellow law st schools sitting out here with you have been there for the, you. They will continue to be there for you. They will watch you rise in your career uh, as law partner, as uh, judges, as legislators, and other prominent roles. And today, as you go forth with these Duquesne Klein law degrees, you are destined, and I can tell you because I've seen my own students get there, you will be leaders of the bench and the bar and our democratic system of laws and justice in the years ahead. You will follow in the footsteps of many legal luminaries who have graduated from this law school. And that includes the namesake of the Thomas R. Klein School of Law, uh, Mr. Tom Klein, who we are privileged to have with us on stage today to help celebrate this momentous occasion and to serve as our commencement speaker. So let me introduce our distinguished honoree, and we have a few slides on the jumbotron that will assist in that introduction. So, as you've probably seen, featured in magazines and newspapers here and across the country, Tom Klein is a 1978 Duquesne Law alum, one of our nation's most influential and highly regarded lawyers. It was one of the great honors of my career to announce in September Tom's $50 million gift to our law school, the largest gift in the entire 145-year history of Duquesne University and one of the largest to any law school in the country. Incidentally, how many of you uh, graduates were there that day? Did you get, were you there? Did you get some swag that day? Still have your t-shirts? Um, that gift from Mr. Klein helps to create new opportunities for our students in terms of scholarship dollars, for our faculty, as you saw, in terms of supporting excellence in teaching and scholarly work important programs like our prized bar prep pro program and I know that some of our graduates are already getting help with bar prep materials through that and by the way did any of you hear hear the news that Duquesne Klein just jumped to 89th ranked in the country a 40 spot jump the largest jump of any law school in the United States so congratulations to Dean Barton to the faculty to all of you for that and let me say, folks, when this class passes the bar exam, we're going to jump another 10 spots. Uh, so Tom's gift also funded new initiatives for our law clinics that will provide hands-on training to our students and graduates while also providing invaluable service to our community and to the system of laws and justice so that they function properly for all citizens. In recognition of this remarkable gift, as well as in recognition of the accomplishments of our most accomplished alum, we enthusiastically renamed the school the Thomas R. Klein School of Law of Duquesne University. And as you may know, this isn't Tom's first generous gift to Duquesne. In 2017, shortly after I became president, 
Uh, Tom made what was then the largest gift in the history of the law school to create the Thomas R. Klein Center for Judicial Education. And that center is now up and running on all cylinders, allowing our law school to partner with the Pennsylvania Supreme Court and the administrative office of the Pennsylvania courts to help deliver first-class continuing judicial education courses to over 600 judges across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania while collaborating with eight other law schools in our state. Uh, this past October, for instance, the center hosted a signature event on campus, I know some of you attended, uh, featuring Chief Judge Jeffrey Sutton of the U.S. Court of Appeals of the Sixth Circuit, a national star. And all of the members of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court were in attendance for that event on campus, a rare honor. Tom Klein grew up in Hazleton, PA, went on to earn a degree at Albright College, and after teaching middle school in Hazleton for a few years and working toward a PhD in American history at Lehigh University, Tom decided that his real calling was to go to law school. And Tom's late wife, Paula, her stepfather, suggested he check out an excellent school in Pittsburgh where he had attended called Duquesne University. So Tom and Paula drove across the state, met with then Associate Dean John Shulow, and the rest is history. When Tom graduated from the law school in 1978, he received the Distinguished Student Award that Morgan and Donnie just received today, the highest honor bestowed by the faculty for academic excellence and meritorious service to the law school. After law school, he achieved his dream by clerking for the Pennsylvania Supreme Court in the chambers of Justice Tom Pomeroy. And soon after that, his Duquesne legal education and formative Duquesne legal experience led him to Philadelphia to the prominent Beasley firm headed by legendary trial lawyer Jim Beasley. And ultimately, it allowed him to launch his own prominent firm of Klein and Specter in 1995 with another leading Pennsylvania attorney Shane Inspector. As the years progressed, Tom earned a reputation as one of the great trial lawyers of all time, prompting the Philadelphia Daily News in 1999 to dub him the Babe Ruth of trial lawyers. For each of the past 20 years, Tom Klein has been recognized in a major peer review survey as the number one lawyer among approximately 50,000 lawyers in Pennsylvania. He's been recognized as well by many publications as one of the top lawyers in the United States. He's tried cases in the counties throughout Pennsylvania, including here in Allegheny County, and Tom has argued some of the most important civil justice and constitutional issues in our appellate courts. He's also won some of the largest civil jury verdicts in the history of the American legal system, representing, in most cases, ordinary citizens and clients who would otherwise have no access to our legal system. And in fact, he has obtained seven and eight figure jury verdicts in courtrooms in Pennsylvania in each of the past five decades. But most proudly in his long legal career, and what I'm most proud of in knowing Tom, is that he has achieved accountability, reform, and remedial measures by corporations, government entities, and other institutions. In recent decades, he has emerged as a leading national voice for the protection of children against abuse and a leading advocate against fraternity hazing. It is no understatement, folks, when Tom Klein has been referred to as the consummate trial lawyer for all generations. We are thrilled that Tom is here today to serve as the very first commencement speaker for the newly named Thomas R. Klein School of Law of Duquesne University. We're also very pleased that his son, Zach, and partner, Brittany, were able to join us today as we recognize Tom with this special honor from the university. So welcome to both of you. This is the first honorary degree that we will be bestowing from this illustrious law school that now proudly bears his name. So 
I am going to bestow the honorary degree, and as I do so, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our esteemed Duquesne University alumnus and benefactor of the Thomas R. Klein of School of Law of Duquesne University, Mr. Thomas Klein. Thomas R. Klein, you'll have some more chances to applaud him, don't worry. Thomas R. Klein is president of Duquesne University of the Holy Spirit, and by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the board of directors of Duquesne University and by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa with all of the rights and privileges thereunto attached and cause you to be invested with the hood appropriate to that degree. Congratulations. Okay, now, before we hear from Tom, I have a surprise uh, that even Tom doesn't know about. He has been, as we saw, a leading lawyer, but he's also been deeply immersed in a broad array of academic interests. Not only did he earn his master's degree in American history, he was actually working toward a PhD in that subject, but he dropped that pursuit, followed his destiny, and came here to Duquesne to pursue a legal career. Yet, Tom's thirst for knowledge and learning has never ceased. It's been a big part of his success, frankly, as an attorney, standing there before judges and jurists, explaining with such clarity a wide range of principles with a depth of intellectual acumen and a broad expanse of knowledge that is truly unmatched. And so, for that reason, it is also my honor today to present Tom with a second honorary degree, a Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, in, recognize, in recognition of a lifelong pursuit of learning and higher education. Yes, Tom, you're now going to have a PhD, so let me read this proclamation. Thomas R. Klein is president of Duquesne University of the Holy Spirit and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors of Duquesne University and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa with all of the rights privileges attached thereto. Ladies and gentlemen, a second degree for Mr. Klein. So now it is my distinct honor to invite our honoree to deliver the keynote address for this wonderful commencement celebration. Ladies and gentlemen, graduates, please welcome our special guest, attorney and now Dr. Tom Klein. Forty-five years later, and they put a hood on me. Uh, wow. Uh, I don't have the teleprompter, by the way. These are going to be remarks from right here and from right here. Uh, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This is home. Uh, I love this university. I love the opportunity that this law school and law degree and law license gave me to try to help others. And I, uh, 
Uh, I feel like I am you again, sitting with you, uh, having a hood around my neck and a, uh, another degree to take home. It's, a, uh, uh, it's the warmest feeling that a person could have, and I thank President Gormley, who is a dear friend, uh, Dean Barton, who is an amazing uh, scholar and teacher, and Dean, thank you. And uh, I, I thank the Spiritans who I met last night uh, and had a wonderful, uh, a wonderful visit. Um, President Gormley only allowed me two hours for this speech. <laughs> and so I, uh, I guess I'll get started. Uh, what he really allotted me is 10 minutes and I always think it's fair that you should know where you stand when you're sitting. And I probably will run over, but I'm going to try to do something that is somewhat pedagogical and somewhat uh, uh, informational, I hope, and also uh, uh, somewhat personal, because commencement speeches, at least uh, the way I understand them, are uh, designed for the speaker to talk to the graduates and to try to weave their life experience into what might be uh, their own uh, to come. Uh, it's a marvelous day in, in your life. I do remember uh, sitting here, literally not in this building, but on this campus, 45, uh, which seems short years ago. Um, so I'm prepared today to offer you the final class at the now Duquesne Klein School of Law. Um, and I offer it as a preparation for the bar review. How many are headed to bar review uh, uh, study? Like a lot. And um, so I want to do it that way with 10 thoughts, 10 lessons uh, that I think might be useful of things that I've observed and I've learned in my, uh, in my years at the bar. So we're going to do it bar review style and we're going to do it hopefully snappy and I will ask you at the end to make sure we're all still awake. Got it? And hopefully you'll say, got it. And I am a big fan of, if anyone has emailed with me, you'll see my Bitmoji, very proud of my Bitmoji. Uh, Brittany Schoenbeck uh, did my Bitmoji for me and I uh, communicate with it and I'm going to communicate it with you this afternoon. So with the help of the Jumbotron, let's get started. Lesson number one. Lesson number one. This isn't complicated, folks. They only make law school complicated. Lesson number one, find happiness. Uh, in order to find happiness, you need to find a work-life balance. It's really important. It's not all work. It's finding what will make you happy. There are empirical studies which show that the richest lawyers aren't the happiest lawyers. Uh, the happiest lawyers are lawyers who are doing something that they care about, that they're immersed in, and that is meaningful to them, and that largely helps someone. We are, after all, lawyers. We are counselors. We are here to serve. So my first proposition is to find happiness, to find work that is enjoyable, that is meaningful, and that is fulfilling. Got it? Two, follow your dreams. You actually have room to make a mistake, or two, or three, or four. If you are 25 years old on your tippy toes, or if you're 40 years old, or if you're 31 years old like I was after teaching school for six years, you have time to find a job that you like, to do professionally what you enjoy, and to, uh, and to live a life that is prof professionally fulfilling. The law profession, unfortunately, here's like the bit of a downer, has people in it who are unhappy. 
and that leads to problems in their personal lives and problems in their, uh, in their professional lives. So, Tom Klein, prescription number two, follow your dreams. Got it? Three, be yourself. We are all unique individuals and we all have something special to offer. That's how we were created. And so if you have someone who you emulate, and I guarantee you that some of you act like some of your professors and talk like some of your professors and argue like some of your professors or lawyers who you will work for. I worked for a great lawyer, a personal story. I worked for the late, great James E. Beasley. There's a law school named after James E. Beasley, the Beasley School of Law at Temple University. And by the way, we're going to pass Temple Beasley as well. <laughs> Write that one down. And Jim was a great trial lawyer. And the first day that I went to work, he took me to court. And I watched him work. And he was great. But I didn't decide to become Jim. I decided to become me. So lesson number three, be yourself. But there's a corollary. Also be kind. I have a piece of paper written on my desk in my office that I see every time that I sit down, which actually my law partner told me he heard in a Yom Kippur service from his rabbi. And he said, I think this is profound. And I wrote it down and I live by this motto. It's better to be kind than to be right. Got it? Number four. Build and guard your reputation. Your reputation, at the end of the day, is all you have. Know that your reputation is the most important thing that you own. It's not anything material, and it's not that first car that you'll buy, and it's not that first home that you buy. It's your reputation. Your reputation is, into, is, uh, in, your, is your integrity in the legal community. It is your calling card. You earn your reputation every day and in every interaction. I appear in courtrooms across the Commonwealth, and I will appear in a courtroom next week. And every time that I go there, 45 years later, I still believe that I'm earning my reputation. So, you treat everyone with respect. You actually don't need to raise your voice to make your point. And you do all of those things that people will respect and admire you. Got it? You sure? Fifth, take care of yourself. For me, I walk 10 miles a day. I got up this morning and I walked and I walked and I walked. I walked up here. I checked out the stage like any good trial lawyer or professor would do. And I, uh, and I uh, walked around in the rain. That's me. You should find something that takes care of yourself physically and emotionally. Again, it's your mental and physical health that at the end of the day are a priority. It may not seem important right now, but every day and every year that passes, it will become important. So, if you're overworked or you're overstressed, you can't take care of your clients if you can't take care of yourself. Lesson number five. Got it? Lesson number six. Listen and ask questions. My mom, who I lost in 1995, and my dad, who I lost in 1981, two people who truly pa paved the path for me, Izzy and Jean Klein, Hazleton, PA, 150 Wilson Drive, if you want to uh, pass their home, if you ever pass through Hazleton. They told me, my mom in particular told me, Nobody ever learned anything while you're talking. And uh, think about it. 
Uh, never stop asking questions. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Keep changing, keep learning, strive for excellence. That's the prescription about asking questions. Got it? Seven, find a mentor and be a mentor. Uh, this is a process of learning and you've only just begun. Every year, the way I envision it, in fact, I'll say it this way, in the first year of practicing law, it has been said that you learn half of what you need to know. And then each progressive year, you learn half of the rest. Translation, you never learn it all. It's a constant learning process. And you uh, need to find a mentor because a mentor is someone who, is, uh, who can set the way for you. I was very fortunate. I found uh, two mentors in, in, in my career, th two real mentors. One, a Supreme Court Justice, the late Thomas Pomeroy, uh, and then uh, Jim Beasley. And I like to say to people that I actually went to the real Beasley School of Law. You should find your Jim Beasley. Find someone who will mentor you. Find someone who you admire. And then latch on to everything you can of that person. And then turn around and be a mentor in this profession. Also, many of you will find a partner. Not only a life partner, but a law partner. And my prescription for that, try to do at least 60% of the load. Do you know why? Why? Because your partner will think that she is doing or he is doing 60%. Got it? Okay. Now I want to talk to you about something that I wouldn't be talking about many years ago, maybe even two years ago, maybe even five years ago. And it's what's called control your electronic destiny. It's the only grumpy Bitmoji. Um, we live in a different age, certainly, than I grew up, a different age than I began practicing law, a different age than many of your professors uh, practice law in. There are so many aspects of our lives that are touched by electronic communications. Email, of course, starts, and text. My prescription, don't send an email that you would not expect to see on the, on the front page of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette or the lead article on their website. It's fundamental. Second, with emails, think before you send. It's easy not to be yourself if you're uh, electronically communicating. It's very important. It's very important to hold that email, that really grumpy email. Park it. Keep it. Social media. I feel obliged, and I hope I don't sound too luxury, but I really wanted to say it to you all today. Uh, don't let it consume you, and don't let it rule you, and don't make mistakes on it. It all sounds too good to be true. And you know what? It's too good to be true. Be yourself, and yes, control your electronic, what I call your electronic destiny. Um, and don't misuse it, and don't disparage others. It is unbecoming and unprofessional. I've seen it, and it hurts other people. Please don't do it. That's the grumpy message. Got it? Oh, and by the way, it's polite in a courtroom before you go in. It's polite in a deposition before you go in. It's polite in a CLE before you go in to turn off your cell phone. That's electronic as well. 
Okay, and then that brings me to the final two, which kind of get merged together. Giving back. We are obliged, in my view, it's incumbent upon us to give back, to give back to others, having nothing to do with being a lawyer. From our family, to our friends, to our community, to people who need us. We're the fortunate, we're the fortunate, and we have to give back to others. It's imperative. We have to give back to the profession. This is a great profession. You're joining a profession you haven't been given a, just a license. You've been given an entree into something bigger and greater. We are, we are, at the end of the day, the stalwarts of democracy, the backbone of our country, and we need to honor it and respect it every day. I've been one of the lucky ones. Every day that I've gotten up for the 45 years that I've been a lawyer, I have been happy to be a lawyer. And if I had one wish for all of you, one overarching wish for all of you, it would be that you find the same happiness in your professional and in your personal lives. And finally, it wouldn't be Duquesne. It wouldn't be a Duquesne University if I didn't tell you to live by the spirit and ideals. One heart, one spirit. Service to others, service to the community. Here's how I see it. Here's how I look at it from a kid who grew up uh, at 811 West Diamond Avenue, Diamond and Grant Street, Hazleton, PA. You only are given one street corner. That's all we all really get. None of us are gonna conquer the world and none of us are gonna conquer the universe. Uh, we are able, however, to take our street corner and make it better. And you'll find your law offices and you'll find your positions in the state legislature and your positions on the court, just like other many other Duquesne Klein graduates have found. Uh, and that will be your street corner, and make it better, and by making that better, you will make the world better, and most important, you will feel really, really good about yourselves. My congratulations to the class of 2023. Thanks, Tom, for your vision, your devotion to your profession, your generosity to your alma mater, which will support generations of students long into the future. Uh, all of these incredible gifts uh, fortify our values, the first-rate legal education we've offered since 1878, and collectively, they will now shape what this institution becomes for decades to come. And it isn't just about large gifts, uh, as Tom's message really signaled. The students who choose Duquesne Klein Law School, including all of you graduates, uh, the communities they will live in and work in and practice law in, and every person they will interact with throughout their per personal and professional lives will all benefit from this education in the way, Tom, that the world has benefited from your great achievements. Can we show our appreciation a final time, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Thomas Klein. So, graduates, as we recognize your achievements and your new stature within the Duquesne Klein community today and far beyond, we do recognize the historic nature of this inaugural year of our new Thomas R. Klein School of Law, Duquesne University, so we have made these beautiful challenge coins for you uh, to take home with you to commemorate this historic year in the life of the law school. And it has on the back, Solus Populi Suprema Lex, uh, the welfare of the people is the highest law, our motto. 
Uh, and because you are special, you will always now be part of this history. So attorney Jim Creenan, one of my former students, now president of our Duquesne Klein Law Alumni Association, will present them. You see those little boxes up there. As you're, after you get your degrees and walk off stage, you'll each receive one of these. And in case you aren't familiar with it, challenge coins represent unity and membership and honor the actions of those receiving them. And historically, they were linked to actual challenges and recipients could actually challenge each other to produce their coins at a moment's notice or else they had to buy a round of drinks. So I'm just saying, folks, you might want to keep this thing handy. It may come in handy when you're meeting your fellow graduates in the future. Today, like our esteemed commencement speaker, you become alumni of one of the nation's finest and most rigorous institutions of legal education. Ladies and gentlemen, I can vouch for this class of 2023. I can't imagine a better class to represent this law school in the professional world as leaders of the bench, the bar, and our society for years to come. And so, on behalf of 8,000 current law school alumni and 100,000 alumni of Duquesne University, I salute you on this remarkable achievement as you receive your well-earned Juris Doctorate degrees and join the elite group of law graduates who have come before you for more than a century. Class of 2023, we're very proud of you as you take this final step now, walking across the stage and receive your degrees. Commencement ceremonies are important occasions to come together, to reflect on our mission and goals, to remember happy and good times, and to celebrate accomplishments and excellence. For this reason, we take great pride in calling forward the law school's graduating students. It is to these students that we dedicate today's program. To begin the presentation of diplomas, I ask that Associate Dean for Students, Ella Quisnick, come forward and announce the names of the graduating students. Will the graduating class of 2023 of the Thomas R. Klein School of Law of Duquesne University please come forward. Dana Aboud. <laughs> Ryan Gabriel Eichner. Kebron Yeshitela Asefa. Alexa Austin. Renee Benjamin Balderas. Matthew Bowman. Victoria Marie Bedick. Katie E. Butler. Matt Cairoli. Morgan Amelia Camerlo. Eva Joel Campion. Mary Abigail Carey. Ronald J. Caruso. Hannah Elizabeth Clark.
Mara Sloan Clark. Matthew Stephen Corcoran. Zoe Michelle Crawford. Anna Virginia Cree. Andrew M. Darnell. Mackenzie Nanette Brianina Davis. Jack Avery Dawson. Flora Alfina Delashad. Samuel Michael Evans. Joseph Fiorillo. Nicholas Stephen Fisher. Aaron E. Fitzpatrick. Brandon Foley. Kayla Chanel Ford Weiser. Richard Young Gaidovsky. Antonia Marie Jalorm. Frederick N. Gillespie. Alexa M. Glista. Nicholas Gonzalez. Jessica Pearl Goodman. Morgan J. Green. Evan Hannon. Jacob A. Heinauer. Colton Hilterman. Fallon Martina Howard. Matthew Alexander Hurley. River Shiloh Eisenhower. Ashley Renee James. Isaac Gente. Delaney Jones. Samuel Kynes. Lauren Ann Canavi. Erica M. Kelly. Andrew J. Class. Madison Marie Kraus. Caitlin Marie Kroll. Evan John Lingefeld. Nicole Lopez. Victoria Marie Lyons. Victoria Catherine Mata. K. 
Kara Elizabeth Magulahan. Taylor Marie Maldonado. Robert J. Moranto III. Jesse A. Mara. Jacob Martin. Daniel Christopher Matisic. Peyton Marie Mechanich. Amanda P. McCauley. Sarah J. McGuire. Amy Lynn McLaughlin. Regan Marie McMichael. David R. McPeak. Richard Andrew Mellick III. Matthew Lesko Meredith. Josephine L. Malacher. Nicholas Monaco. Falco Anthony Muscanti. Annabelle Rose Nitupski. Benjamin E. Norman. Trevor Michael North. Carla Marie Nate. Madeline Olds. Christopher R. Olmsted. Olamide Opeyami Oweya. <laughs> Natalie Grace Packard. Daniel Pagana. Joseph Palmquist. Dante Alfonso Parente. Amber Pavusco. Tyre Phillips. Taylor Joseph Pollier. Megan M. Principe. Philip Repepi Quinn. Teresa R. Rabia. Taylor Nicole Rydell. Claudia B. Repepi. Kara Robertson. Kyle A. Rogers. Laura Catherine Ryder. Mark Sabados. Patrick Andrew Sayers. Hannah Elizabeth Schaefer. 
Thomas A. Shibrell. Jacob Daniel Schramm. Kristen Marie Shipion. Patrick Scully. Alexa Shello. Donald Raymond Shelton. Anna Marie Sichanitsa. Thomas Silko. Nicole Dominique Singleton. Jonathan P. Sion. Trent Walter Smith. Daniel Charles Smolsky. Jillian P. Southworth. Kane Elizabeth Spitak. Alexander David Stevenson. Megan Stump. Jonathan Charles Sullivan. Aubrey Lee Swank. Heather Ann Swick. Gregory Thomas. Samantha J. Thompson. Garrett Lewis Treadle. Erica Lynn Trinetti. Zachary Charles Falcosi. Aaron Bowles. Brandon Thomas David Walsh. Joshua Samuel Weinberg. Brooke Jacqueline Schock Wenzel. Carolyn Wislowski. Samuel T. Whalen. Kayla Louise Williams. Vaughn Wooding. Elizabeth M. Wartman. Nicole Rose Zelich. Sarah Margaret Zimmerman. Lisa M. Zulik. As Dean of the Thomas R. Klein School of Law, Duquesne University, and on behalf of the law school faculty, I present to President Gormley these students who have completed their academic curricula and are entitled to recognition. President Gormley, please confer upon them the degrees they have earned. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Graduates, can you please rise? 
Okay, hold it, hold it. It's not official yet. Come on, don't jump the gun. Uh, so family members, let's focus all of our attention on these graduates as we reach this important moment in the ceremony. They've been working so hard for that you have supported them with love and encouragement for all of these years. Graduates, as president of Duquesne University of the Holy Spirit and by the authority vested in me by the board of directors of Duquesne University and by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I hereby confer upon you the degrees you have earned with all of the rights, privileges, and obligations pertaining thereto. Congratulations, graduates. It's official, ladies and gentlemen. The Duquesne Klein class of 2023. Yeah, you can stand up, come on. Wonderful. Well, you may be seated. As we conclude today's commencement ceremony, I would like to thank all of the families and the loved ones that are here with our graduates. Your support has been absolutely critical during your graduates' past several years. Very special thank you to President Gormley, Mr. Klein, and the entire university administration for your commitment to our School of Law. My sincere and profound thanks to our law school staff and administration who tirelessly serve with professionalism and aplomb every single day. In particular, I must thank Associate Dean Ella Quisnick and our law school registrar, Heather Shaw, who planned every last detail of today's commencement ceremony in a coordination with Assistant Vice President Christina Morton. And thank you to our tremendous faculty who have been with you every single step of the way throughout your law school journey. Congratulations, class of 2023. We are all incredibly proud of you. And now I'd like to move to the closing segment of this ceremony with the singing of the alma mater. But first I'd like to add a few notes about this university's his historical musical piece. A group of Spiritan priests landed in Pittsburgh 150 years ago and in a few short years founded what would become Duquesne University. As part of marking the anniversary of their arrival, President Ken Gormley had the vision to refresh the university's original alma mater for a new era with beautiful words and music inspired by the original. President Gormley wanted both words and music infused with the echoes of the original, which was in part written by Spiritan Reverend John F. Malloy in 1920. He asked that the music be created by one of our many talented compo composers at the Mary Pappert School of Music, Composition Area Coordinator Robert Tra. President Gormley himself, an accomplished writer, wrote the lyrics. The two collaborated over the past academic year with help and input from re recent alums and friends. Today, Duquesne University alumna Debbie Zugates, who will, perf will perform the refreshed version for all of us. I invite everyone here to join along. The words are in the program and will also appear in the big screens throughout the Fieldhouse. Following the alma mater, Father Bill Christie will offer the benediction. Now please welcome back the talented Debbie Zugates.
Graduates of the Thomas R. Klein School of Law, bow your heads and pray for God's blessing now that you have graduated from Duquesne University of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, for the Spirit has blessed you with wisdom. May the Spirit continue to bless you so that you have the ability to judge and direct human affairs according to divine truth. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Spirit who gives life, for the Spirit has blessed you with understanding. May the Spirit give you now even more keen and penetrating insight into the very heart of things and allow you to choose the greatest good Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, for the Spirit has blessed you with counsel. May you steadfastly be open to the Spirit and be willing to be molded, directed, counseled by the voice of God. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the advocate, for the Spirit has blessed you with fortitude. May the Spirit command in you a firmness of mind in doing good and avoiding evil, particularly when it is difficult or dangerous to do so. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the mighty column of smoke by day and fire by night, for the Spirit has blessed you with knowledge. May the Spirit dwelling in you, invoke in you, the ability to judge correctly about matters of faith and right action so that you never wander from the straight path of justice. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the great sanctifier, for the Spirit has blessed you with piety. May the Spirit ever open your heart that you may be constant in giving worship and duty to God. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the animator of the universe, for the Spirit has blessed you with wonder and awe of the Lord. May the Spirit open your eyes to see the grandeur of God, and seeing it, may you be caught up in reverence for God. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the patron of our university, under whose protection you have studied, under whose gifts you have grown, and under whose grace we now commend you. Graduates, and all you present here to share this day of celebration, be blessed now and always, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This concludes our 2023 commencement ceremony. Thank you all for coming. You, you are all welcome to a reception on the concourse level. I ask that you please remain in place while the faculty and the graduates leave the auditorium.